So I love reading, especially reading to learn, but I'm generally a pretty busy person, which you can tell by my latest library haul. Definitely not gonna have time to get through all of these. I have been reading this one though, I really like it. So I understand how it can be difficult to find time to read and dedicate a half hour or an hour to sitting down and focusing on a book. And I actually don't wind up doing that all that much. And yet for the past four years, I've managed to read between 40 and 60 books each year. 67 is my personal best. And that's on top of usually having a full-time job and always having other business to attend to. How do I do it? Listen. Oh, that's how I do it. I listen. Hey, it's your girl Asante, helping you move consciously and creatively through life, so let's go. Now there's a little more to it than just listening, and I definitely have a whole system for keeping up with my reading, which I'm going to share with you as well, but leaning on audiobooks has by far been the best thing that I've done for my continuous reading. Now before you get all in a tizzy about how listening to a book isn't the same thing as reading it, Listen, my goal in reading isn't to run my eyes over a page, it's to understand information and immerse myself in stories. I'm doing a lot of the same thinking and note taking when I'm listening to a book as when I'm physically reading one, but I find it's easier for me to focus when I'm listening. I find listening to be even more immersive, especially when you have an expressive narrator, and I find it's easier for me to do the most important thing, actually get through the book. I listen to audiobooks while I'm doing laundry, doing dishes, cooking, washing and detangling my hair because that takes a while, going for a walk, commuting, and sometimes just to relax at the end of the day. Nowadays I listen to podcasts a bit more, but there was a time where if I wasn't listening to music, I was listening to an audiobook because I was hungry for evergreen information on personal development, wellness, career management, and just setting up my life as an adult, figuring out how I want to live and think independently. I'm motivated to read because I'm actively searching for timeless insights and wisdom that I can immediately apply to living a better life. My biggest source for audiobooks is the library. Libby is the app that my library system uses and it's one of the most used apps on my phone. Now you do have to wait in line when you use the library, but if waiting for three weeks means I don't have to spend $30 on a book that I might listen to one time, I'll wait the three weeks. And all I do is make sure to stagger my holds so that some have longer wait times and some have shorter ones. I can line them up in advance since I can have up to 10 holds at a time, and once I check it out, I have three weeks to read it. Boom. Easy. I also love the library because there is that built-in deadline, and because it's digital, it will go back to the library on the deadline. There's no holding it out overdue because you're not finished. That deadline is often what motivates me to finish a book when I could be listening to something else. It also feels so empowering when the library doesn't have the book that you want, and then you request it, and then they buy it because you requested it. Yeah. Thanks to my taxpayer dollars through this resource that anyone can access, I can have quality information for free funneled directly into my brain. It's like the biggest life hack on getting smarter. So I don't buy very many books, but when there is a book that I know will take me a long time to read, or I know I want to listen to over again, I pick it up on Audible. And sometimes if I listen to a book and want to go back and highlight, take a lot of notes, and potentially use points from the book in my own work, that's when I'll go ahead and buy the Kindle version or the physical version. I try to only buy books that I know will be an ongoing resource for me. I'm always actively managing my reading list, and I find it helps for me to make it a priority within my task management systems. Before, when I used Evernote to manage my tasks, I had a note that kept track of every book I'd read that year, and the note was starred so it showed up right at the top. Now that I use Notion to manage my tasks and projects, I have a database that keeps track of not only what I've read this year, but also what I'm in the middle of reading, and it has a formula that calculates how far along I am in the book and gives me a cute little progress bar. A little cute motivational progress bar. I mark what I want to read next, what I want to read soon, and I use it to capture general book recommendations that I might read or I might not. I note down who recommended the book so that if I do go back and finish it, I can let that person know and we can talk about it. That feature is also handy because I can search by, what was that book that my friend Jen recommended? Oh yeah, right. And when I finish a book, along with marking it as complete, I give it a one-word review and note whether I'd be interested in rereading it. That way I know what's worth coming back to. By having this log, I can jog my memory on what books I've read on a certain topic that might be good to incorporate into my current work. I actually made a template for this reading list database that I will link to in the description if you want to just swipe my system. Having some system like this keeps reading top of mind and makes it a bit of a game to track your progress. In fact, I keep a view of this database in a top of mind section within my action dashboard where I do my day-to-day -day task management. I went through that in my video about my Notion to-do list. Another reason why I read so much is because it's one of my main forms of entertainment. I basically don't watch television unless I'm doing research because I work in media 
or I'm checking out a specific piece of pop culture that I really love, but I don't have a daily or weekly TV watching habit. If I want to wind down, I pick up a book or I listen to one. I don't watch sports, I don't read magazines, I don't follow celebrity gossip, I don't consume a ton of news or social media content outside of work and the basics of staying informed. If I whip out my phone while I'm waiting in line somewhere, I'm probably on my Kindle app. We spend a lot of our days consuming media in various forms, whether it's for leisure or just to fill small pockets of time, and when you replace that with reading and see your reading as entertainment, you can get through quite a bit. Which brings me to another point that it helps to be reading things that you really want to read, that you're really interested in, rather than things that you think you should be reading. I am not afraid to abandon books that are classic or popular because I find them boring. I realized that this is one of the reasons why I didn't really like reading in school. In school you read a lot of older novels, and here in the US, let's face it, most of them centered on white and European perspectives, so that already felt less relatable for me. And I found that I actually prefer nonfiction to fiction in most cases. I feel like novels can be hit or miss. It feels like sometimes a story isn't going anywhere important, or if it is, it takes a heck of a long time to get there. But with nonfiction, it feels real and relevant, and like I could have used this information yesterday. So I feel more motivated to get through the material. And I also avoid boredom by reading multiple books at a time, usually three to five. I might have one physical book that I'm reading in the evening, one Kindle book that's quick to access on my phone, and then a few that I'm listening to. Sometimes I'm in the mood for some heavy, meaningful, social commentary nonfiction. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a fun love story. Sometimes I'm interested in an actionable business book that's gonna get me motivated. So I keep a variety going to suit my moods. What really makes my reading life-changing is that I take notes, especially for nonfiction, but also for fiction when I like a particular turn of phrase or a certain intricate plot line. I not only take notes on the content of the book, but also on the ideas that spark while I'm reading it and on the ways that I can apply the principles to my own life. I use the note-taking system within the audio app or within Kindle, and then I transfer those notes to Evernote, which is still my note-taking system of choice. And then I basically have an encyclopedia of the most salient nuggets of wisdom I've pulled out of my reading over the years. This is a super handy reference and reinforces my motivation to continue reading and learning. And so there you have it. That's how I read so many books each year and keep myself motivated even when work and life gets busy. My reading list notion template is linked in the description if you so desire. It's also built into my yearly planning system and my overall life operating system. As a bonus over on Patreon, I'll be sharing the list of 40 plus books that I read over the past year, along with a few short notes on what I'd recommend. So you can join my brilliant beans over on Patreon if you're interested in that. Shout out to my Patreon supporters who are helping me to make these videos sustainable. As always, remember to live spiritedly and think creatively, and I will see you next time.